Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Chinese here, also known as China Acosta, an actress and independent filmmaker. So today I'm joined by Lady Seikon Simbla. Hey, say, say hey, Seikon. Hi everybody, hi, I'm Seikon, actress, uh, influencer, tea lover. <laughs> Wonderful singer. Singer, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> say cheers to femininity, cheers. Cheers to femininity. Okay. Oh, that's very sweet. I just shout out. I'm doing my Yoni Utopia tea today. It's a black owned business. I'm always oh. love to promote. Okay, so respect. Black owned tea. I'm going to freshen my cup a little bit. Got a little respect to that. So I'm going to get this um, femininity topic popping. Um, let me, honestly, we, we wanna, let me start out with my mother. Let's start out with our mothers. Okay. Okay. My mother, shout out to my mother, Emma Dork. She's going to kill me for saying <laughs> Emma Colston, mm. born in Grenada, Mississippi. My mother was my first example of femininity, right? Mm -hmm. And my mother, I remember my mother telling, she told me a story when she, she had me when she was 21 years old and married to my father at the time. My mother said she was still wearing heels and sexy dresses when she was pregnant with me. So shout out to my mother. All right. For not throwing in a towel on femininity because she's pregnant. Yeah, your mother said, belly or not, I'm gonna wear these shoes. Listen, we are gonna keep the sexy going, pregnancy or not. My mother, um, I used to put on her clothes and well, when she was at work, I would put on her, her dresses and her heels. I could barely walk in them, still can't barely walk in heels. I would put on her lipstick, put on her lipstick and try to do my hair like hers. Um, mm -hmm. This is, of course, while she was at work. And I would sneak and spray her Liz Claiborne perfume going to high school. Like she wouldn't notice that all of a sudden she doesn't have as much perfume. But that's how our teenager is thinking. So my mm -hmm. mother was always wearing like, her- Like she wasn't going to smell it. Like she wasn't going to smell, exactly. Right. She wasn't going to smell it. She wasn't going to notice that it was diminishing. My mother always wore red lipstick. My mother has a beautiful, gorgeous smile. She has a wonderful eight, figure eight, tiny waist, hips, but um, mm -hmm. I didn't, I got a little bit of that. I didn't get it. I'm not as- curvaceous of my mother but um she was always so feminine and always wore um her red lipstick and and her um mascara and her clothes were always form-fitted and she had three children her body is still popping it's still better than mine so what about your mother oh i want to give a good shout out to my mother i think that so the way that my mother drinks coffee is the way that i drink tea my mother is a coffee <laughs> lover shout out to miss deborah my mother um she, I would say one of the biggest things in femininity that I got from my mother, I will absolutely add the perfume thing in as well. My mother always bought the finest perfume. She still does to this day. Um, I remember my mother buying um, a Ralph Lauren Safari perfume. It was like this new, and it wasn't just perfume. It wasn't Eau de Toilette. It was parfum. Like it was the strong like she had this little crystal bottle. It was like this box. And I would, and look, I would go in my mama's room. Shout out mom. She probably watched, gonna watch this video. I would go in her room and open the little box and take out the crystal and spray a little bit on. Um, I think also one of the biggest things um, that I got from my mother um, was an obsession with charm school or, and or um, charm topics. My mother went to charm school and she had, I don't know what the name, I can't remember the name of the school, but she had this book. Mom, shout out if you can, uh, you have to remind me. She had this book and I would always look through the pages of it. It was from, from the sixties when she was a kid mm -hmm. and it was a book on how to do a proper roller set or how to take care of your clothing, how to hem your clothing, how to just how to be a lady. And um, so she had her book, and then eventually I ended up ordering my own sort of new books. It was this thing, it was called, um, it was called Teamworks. Is anybody out there remember Teamworks? It was this thing where you would get every month, you would get a new, a new couple of section of pages to put into your notebook on how to be a lady, how to, you know, growing up and 
you know, getting grow, getting your curves and buying your first undergarments and, you know, all that good kind of stuff. So I would say the idea of charm school, I think my mom, she let me go to Barbizon for a second. I, you know, I did a, a, a pageant in high school. I only did one pageant, but I wished I could have done a lot more. Um, but I would say for sure, my mother's appreciation of antiques and perfume and lovely purses, I would say say I definitely got from my mother and my mother also loves red lipstick and so did my grandmother um Susie Mae Jackson I rest her soul yes shout out to the red lipstick honey I'm yeah. gonna plug in real quick while you okay. talk about the next little part so the, see, I'm um, getting a little the next part um my lipstick is looking a little orange but it's actually red but the next part is um so I went to um I went to the salon, oh, I'm sorry, the, um, the nail salon to have my fake gel nails removed. And oh, yes, we were talking about this. Yeah. You had the gel. Let me see, wait, let me see what kind of nails you got right now. Put them oh, on the these camera. Are these are mine. These are mine. Those look beautiful. Thank but you. it's beautiful. You polished it yourself or you got a regular manicure. That looks beautiful. No, I polished it myself. I was like, yeah. Had a little something myself. These you are got a little something. Little grocery uh, store joints so you can get them on oh, Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I went to, in, in uh, Fort Greene, Brooklyn, I went to, have, had them remove and they had me soak my hands. And you know how when you soak, when they um, hold your hands to remove the nails or whatever, you have to touch their hands, the, the manicurist hands. Mm -hmm. And I, my hands were, my fingers were resting on her hand and I was like, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, her hands are so supple. I can't believe how soft her hands are. And I and I remember thinking my hands are you were feeling you were like, oh I was like on the low like what a supple hand she has. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like and then and then she the same manicure is I asked for a massage and she massaged me. But more importantly it was like how soft her hands were. And I started to think about men. Mm. The, the lovers in my life. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like I, I I called one immediately <laughs> and I was like, what is it? What does it mean? To, and I immediately wanted to have my hands as soft as her hands because, you know, when I touch a, a, a man who I have a desire for his company and such, mm -hmm. I want my hands to be soft when I, when, he, when I touch him or whatever, I want him to like, oh, wow, her hands are so soft. And, and, um, so it made me think like, wow, China, you need to invest in some product to make your hands soft because that's a part of being feminine is the texture of our hands should be soft, our bodies, and of course, our personality should be soft. Yes. Mm. You want to chime in? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think, um, I'll tell you what, I think there's this thing regarding women in their hands, and I think we take a lot of us take our hands for granted because we spend a lot of time putting creams and moisturizers, taking care of our faces, even doing, you know, our decolletage, we're always like moisturizing and trying to keep all this together, right? And honey, we just let these hands, we just let these hands go to, way, go to hell in a handbasket. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I, I, I actually appreciate it um, because you had sent me this video about taking care of your hands. And I was like, oh, I need to. I need to get on it. I want to say one of the first things I think of, we're both actresses, right? Whenever you're about to go on camera, do you always think, oh my God, are my hands ashy? Yes. You know what I mean? I'm always like, oh, let me put some moisturizer. Let me make sure I'm not ashy. I, even on my YouTube channel, my Sacon Talks, sometimes at the beginning of the talk, I will bring out my coconut oil and I will start cooking the moisturizer because I'm like, I don't want to be ashy on, on camera. I don't want to be ashy in front of people. I think one of the things that makes women so attractive is soft and decadent hands, soft and moisturized hands. If we can keep them moisturized, I think, I mean, I'll be real. Like a lot of times when I'm choosing my nail colors or, I mean, these nails are a little extra, um, but when I'm choosing what kind of nails I had, I'm always trying to pick a color that won't make my hands look old. I worry about, you know, is this going to make my hands look old? Do my hands look old? You know, because, you know, none of us are getting any younger, no, you know. No. <laughs> so, you know, you know, they say 
black. So your face would be looking 19, and meanwhile, your hands would be looking like looking like you was out there picking cotton last week, you know? So, <laughs> Shout out to our ancestors. <laughs> Shout out to the ancestors. I share, I share, I share, you know, but I'm just saying, like, I definitely think that soft hands are a part of it. When you, at, you, so you said you called up one of your male friends and you asked him his opinion on hands. What was his answer? What did he say? He said, it is very important. He's like, I like to feel soft hands. I want to be felt by the soft hands. He said, and everything should be. He said, I like to feel them and I want to be felt. Felt by the soft hands. Okay. He said, he said, when your hands are soft, we are assuming everything else is soft. We're keeping it okay. PG. Okay. Okay. He said, it's, it's, he said, it should be every part of the body. Every part, the woman is soft. So mm -hmm. yes, that's important. It is very important. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. And so. Ex exfoliating one's hands is crucial in having mm. soft hands. Mm. Look, my mother used to always say <laughs> to me, um, she'd be like, well, make sure you put some moisturizer so when you get on these award shows, your skin will look good. That was like, when I was a kid, I used to be like, Lord, let me, let me at least get on an award show so that I can have moisturized <laughs> skin. Well, how often do you exfoliate? How often do you exfoliate your hands? You well, be, this I don't do that because of what happened. I immediately went to Target and I purchased me some Saint Ives exfol hand exfoliator. And I'm on. I, I forgot to do it today. Okay. I forgot to do it today because again, it, ha it hasn't become habitual for me yet. But I'm. I think. Okay. okay. Sunday, I'm going to start moving forward and just do it, like, at least, I'm going to start slow. Let me take it slow, okay, in this whole femininity game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start out just once, one Sunday, like, every Sunday. I was going to say, one of the interesting things is that there's so many different products that are good. When you said St. Ives, girl, you took me to that St. Ives, oh, no, wait. So there's the St. Ives apricot scrub that a lot mm -hmm. of people use. I've used it on my face. I use mm -hmm. it on my face. I use it on my chest. I even use it on my armpits oh. um, and my elbows, but I don't always use it on my hands. Um, and then what's the other? There's a, um, there's a green mask, the uh, Queen Helene, that green mask. Mm -hmm. It's like Oski Woski. I've seen it in fancy drugstores. I've seen it in, um, oh, you know, just low budget drugstores and fancy drugstores. Mm -hmm. And I, the thing that I've seen recently that I've started since I'm opening my eyes to just, just having better self care in general is people doing masks on their hands. So, mm -hmm. so the scrub, the mask, people are doing um, paraffin wax treatments, you know, where they're putting their hands into the wax, that whole thing. Mm. Um, Exfoliating gloves too exfoliating gloves so i put on exfoliating gloves to exfoliate my legs because my legs oh lord my legs can get out of hand like this just ash ash around okay. mm -hmm. uh, so i put the gloves on to exfoliate my legs but i i don't i definitely don't put as much time into my hands i'm i'm so glad you brought this up honey because I'm, I'm gonna get these hands together okay so i have to share and I, I did I actually share this on a youtube video i did but i'll revisit it because of the topic so um, I was heading home on the subway and I was sitting seated and I had my mask on and I didn't have any earrings on. I had on some jeans and my legs were crossed at the ankles or whatever. And a little... Still, no, not a fancy day. No, no. I just got a fresh haircut and um, this little girl, like five, six-year-old little um, girl with an Afro puff right here, mm -hmm. she was just... She saw me, she's just looking at me. Mm -hmm. And she waved and then she was like, Oh, are you a She said, Are you a girl? Oh, okay. And I removed my mask and I said, Yes. And I smiled at her. And then she's like, So she was relieved that I was a part of the girl club, but I would look peculiar to her. So she was like, wasn't sure. And I like the I like the boldness of her to ask me the question. Well, how old was she? Five or six. You know what? I'll tell you what. I think when people when kids are little, really the deciphering factor is hair or no hair. 
And I think we don't, little kids don't really understand that it's not just hair or no hair. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, was, so, I wasn't offended at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting because it was from the voice of a child. If an adult, like at this, you know, in these times of these, um, what do we call it? These uh, politically correct times that we live in, an adult, I guess it's not like we're not supposed to ask each other about our, you know, are you male or female or, you know, are you, because there are people who are um, non-binary, you know, people have all different ways of referring to themselves. So when the little girl asked you, did you, what did you think that, did, did you feel there was a question about femininity or? I think it was, I think in her, her little five-year-old mind, she was like, I think she was thinking her eyes are feminine, her eyes look girly. Mm -hmm. Her face looks soft. Her face looks soft, but little. <laughs> little, but her hair is like my brothers or my father or my cousins and, you know, my friends. Her hair is not like my mother, but I think she is a girl because she wouldn't have asked the question. And mm -hmm. she was just, when she found out I was and I smiled at her, she was just smiling and waving. Um, and that made my day. It made my day. I don't, I think, again, because she was so innocent, it was very pure. Mm -hmm. And it was a legitimate question. I had no earrings on. I had a mask on. Like, how is she supposed to know if that's not, she, if she's not exposed to women in her family who, who wear their hair? And this is, let's keep it 100. This is a masculine haircut. This is a masculine style. Let's be clear, right? At least in the Western world. I mean, in America. And I'm, in the Western world, it's a masculine style. I happen to really tap into my femininity on GP. So um, I, I understand the question because I'm, I'm going to be honest. When I was five years old, oh my God, when I was five years old, I remember Grace Jones came on the scene in some midnight show. I used to, I don't know why I was up at midnight at five years old, whatever. That's I was. And um, shh. <laughs> Glad she scared me as a five year because I was like I felt like a little girl like is that a is that a man or a woman? Mm. She confused me and she scared me. Mm. She scared me because it she was it was not clear to me like, what is she? Well, she um, had that, she had a very specifically androgynous style. Grace Jones did. She did. Shout out to Grace Jones. Shout out she, to Grace Jones. All of her artistry and everything. But I know what you mean as a child. When again, you're going very simply, you're thinking long hair, short hair, or you're thinking um, like if the women around you are more full and then Grace Jones is super tall and, and angular, then you're just like, oh, but then she's pretty, but oh, you know what I mean? So I could see how, you know, some confusion would come in that, you know. But speaking of pretty, I never thought she, honestly, I'm going to be very 100 here. Okay. I thought she was ugly as a, as a child. As a teenager, I thought she was ugly. And I was like, I don't, and then when I, as a teenager, I was like, why is she a model? I don't understand. This is at 14. Hold on, hold tight. Who did you, yeah, who were your people that you thought were beautiful at that time? When I was uh, Anita Baker, uh, Mickey Howard, um, Debbie Allen, you know, all these women. They were all more soft softness style yeah yes my aunts had long hair or shoulder length hair or chin length hair it was curled they were very soft and feminine and so I see this woman who is pretty much flat chested but when I turned 15 something happened oh I was hanging out with my friend and her father's I used to wear my hair I tried to wear my hair like Grace Jones so my hair was permed I had it in a bun I had to slick back in a button and I had my veins shooting straight up like Grace Jones and I was trying to emulate her aesthetic literally a year later. And her, my friend father said, you look like Grace Jones. And I was like, I was insulted that, but oh, then, you didn't like Grace Jones at the time. You were like, mm -mm, no, I, I like the hairstyle, but I was like, she's not attractive. And you saying I look like her, that's an insult. But then Three years later, I saw her in the magazine and she was smiling and I was like, oh my God, her features are beautiful. But it mm. took years for me to come to that under, for me to behold her physically, facially beautiful. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she is and she was and is a stunning, stunning woman. But I know what you mean. Like, I think 
I guess we all have get into our traditions or we, we all have had traditions sort of sewn into us mm -hmm. in terms of our understanding of what is beauty, mm -hmm. what is femininity, you know. I know that um, I definitely have old traditions built into me. Um, I always, as a kid, and, and specifically American traditions, as a kid, I always um, wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. I remember they wore the, the silver and the blue and the white and they had the hat. I mean, back in the, you know, back in the day. And I just thought they were the prettiest thing. And I would always look, 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 and find a black girl on the team and be like, oh my God, it's a black girl. Oh my God. Like, you know, also looking for, you know, beauty pageants and different things like that. Whenever there would be a black girl somewhere in the beauty pageant, you know, I remember when, um, Vanessa Williams. Well, I remember, I faintly remember when Vanessa Williams, hearing about when Vanessa Williams had won that big pageant. I think it might have been Miss USA or something. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, what's the young lady who's on, um, the young lady on Housewives of Atlanta. She ended up winning Miss America. You know, there's just been so many um, instances in the national or I guess the international viewpoint of the world where we see black women get elevated that way. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like black women are, are when, when you think of femininity, do you immediately think of the women that you know in your life? Mm -hmm. Do you think of celebrities, um, you know, or do you think of, you know, people you've encountered? Um, I would say all of the above, again, starting with my mother and my aunts, mm -hmm. who are very feminine, who crossed their legs and wore pearls and um, wore clothes that were form-fitting, mm -hmm. um, tasteful but form-fitting. And then I would, you know, again, you know, the Debbie Allens of the world, the Mela Monroe's, the, the Dorothy Dandridge, and, and um, Diane Carroll. I would say, yeah, those... And, and we some have women to talk, to talk about those ladies too. Yeah, the women, some women I encounter on the on the on the train, um, even in my neighborhood in Hyde Park, even going back to this haircut, I remember seeing three women at my church or in my neighborhood, and they wore their hair short and natural like this, and they were so feminine, and they used to wear sundresses all the time, and they had their bracelets on and their hoop earrings and their red lipstick and their mascara and i'm just i just thought they just mm -hmm. were so feminine and pretty and uh yes. yeah yeah mm -hmm. how long how long ago has it been since those days like those chicago days since i lived in chicago yeah oh 13 years in my 13 years this monday i'll be living in new york so and then would you say you've seen the same types of femininity in New York? You know what, in New York, different? I have to say, um, I noticed more wigs and weaves as an expression of femininity in New York than in Chicago. Is that, um, do you think that's th because that's this era? Or if you were in Chicago right now, you would still see less? Famous? I think I would. I think I would see less weave and wigs in Chicago than I, would today i think maybe because again new york is like you know the film and television industry so a, a number of women may be actresses so they wear more I different looks a way, yeah. right right and um so that's definitely a part of it and f false lashes i see more false lashes in new york and false nails um and I think it's, it's been a thing. It's been a huge resurgence of false lashes. My mom always talked about in her era, they wore fake, you know, lashes as well. They wore a lot of lashes and wigs. Then it went like, I guess the, the whole Afro movement, black power, whatever movement. And then back in the eighties, perm started back in Jerry curls. And then it, in the late nineties, doo doo braids and braid, you know, and braid extensions and weave, 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 weave taken over, you know? I'm gonna tell you something. I was at a, um, at a, I went to a poetry spot with my ex-boyfriend and it was a- so ex-boyfriend. I'm that one. I'm like, ex, you ain't supposed to be hanging out with no ex. No, 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 this was, this was back when we were together. Oh, and, okay, okay, okay. No, 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 yeah, when we, when we were together, uh, yeah. we went to a, a house full and it was a bunch of poets. 
And we were just talking or whatever. And this one guy, an old elder poet was like, these women wearing all these weeds and why can't they be natural? I said, because you know what we want, we just want to look pretty, okay? We mm. want to look pretty. And sometimes that's an expression of us looking aesthetically pretty. It doesn't mean we dislike ourselves all the time and we have this, we have a um, low hair esteem or and sometimes we just want to switch it up. I don't like to switch it up, but I appreciate women who do like to switch it up. And it doesn't, it doesn't subtract from their femininity or from who they are, who, their intelligence. It's just an aesthetic switcheroo. And like, yeah. give us a break. We just want to look pretty. We just want to look pretty. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I can't lie. I'm, I wear fake hair probably 85% of the time. Like, <laughs> I... <laughs> I probably wear fake hair three weeks out the out the month and then one week off and then back to my three weeks. Like I'm I wear all sorts of extensions and braids. How do you do that? I'm curious. Why why do you do it? You know, I'll say I went through I did about 10 years where I wore my hair like how you wear yours. Okay. Um and I first I first shaved my hair and went natural. So I grew up, I had relaxers growing up. And then just my last year of high school, I shaved my head. And so it was a whole 10 years that I went wearing my hair super low, twists on occasion if I let it grow that long. But mm -hmm. usually I would be back at the barbershop um, or, you know, long enough to just teeny weeny afro, like mm -hmm. TWA for like 10 years. And then the last 10 years, I grew it out and I got into, um, I got into a, an enjoyment of hairstyles. I find that, um, as I started to simplify my life, I started to simplify my clothing a lot. Um, I was uh, I actually wrote an article on my on my uh, my blog about the personal uniform, and one of the things I did was I started buying like the same clothes. Like I would have like this dress. I have this same dress in a bunch of different colors. I just be like, change the dress, change the dress. It's the same dress. But where I would find my creativity would be in changing my hairstyles. So doing my makeup a different way, doing my hair a different way, that was my creativity because with all of the different things that I do, a lot of the time that's taken up um, just in my lifestyle of being a, a, an actress and a vo vocalist and, and an online influencer, just doing so many different things, it's like um, the time that it would take to spend time either i would go back to doing what you do which is shaving it off mm -hmm. or i would pop something on and since i wasn't in the the vibe of wanting to wear it super low again i just pop something on i pop a ponytail on i pop a wig on i pop something on even now i've been um doing interlocking the little micro interlocks i'm not quite finished with it but my real hair i'm, lo I'm actually locking my real hair the, the micro interlocks i would say like the whole majority of my hair the front part is not going to be locked but I'm, I'm actually like locking my hair and we'll see how long I keep that I might end up shaving it again and going right back to the shave hair look that look was one of my favorite looks when I first I would say maybe about five years into wearing my hair super low I um I had gotten a a car let me see if I can find a picture I had a um <laughs> I had let me turn this ringer off I had a a VW. I had a, one of those um, new Beatles, Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. And I used to buy this little box kit. And it was a dark and lovely box kit. And it had Mary J. Blige on the cover. And the co color was called Red Hot Mary. So I had my buzz cut like you. And then I would put my little, I would put my Red Hot Mary color in there. And you couldn't tell me nothing. I had my big hoop <laughs> earrings on. Um, so I feel like I'm either one extreme. I know one thing is that I don't want to do my hair, like spend a lot of time doing my hair every day. So it's either going to be no hair at all or locks or fake hair. Like the idea of constantly styling it, constantly, even also constantly picking out clothes. Like when, speaking of femininity, you know, a lot of us, we relate femininity to, um, to makeup, right? Mm -hmm. To makeup, to lipstick to eyelashes to all that stuff don't you, you remember when um what's her name um alicia keys i'm trying to pull up this picture she went through that period where she was doing like no makeup at all i believe she might actually still be I think she's still practicing that. no makeup period 
Yeah. When she did it, everybody seemed like they were so shocked and they were so, I can't believe she needed to put some makeup on. Da, da, da. I'm going to tell you what, when she first did that, I totally got it. I totally got it. And one of the main reasons I would say I got it was because as an actor, you're doing so many different, you're constantly changing your looks so often. And it gets like, it just gets exhausting. And so it was, I felt her, like it was like a protest, like me wearing, getting the same dress over and over again, you know, or seeing Simon Cowell in the same black t-shirt over and over again, you know, it was almost like a protest. Like she was like, you know what? I'm not going to let y'all judge me based off of how I look, you know? I think femininity, like you with a mask, with no makeup, on the train, with your boots, a little girl was, the little girl was still like, are you a girl? Because she saw your femininity and that it wasn't just based off of hair or nails or outfits or dresses or whatever. Like what makes you feminine is not just about the the outer application of styles or, or you know what I mean? The glitter mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But don't we love a little glitter even so, you know? I, I love, so, um, I, I put on a wig, when I did put on a wig, and I, I did a video about this too, and I walked down the street with a bang, long, and I'm, I'm going to be very honest, I felt so, I did feel like a, a heightened sense of femininity, and I know, mm -hmm. I'm, I know that it's influenced by the West, I understand that, I, I yeah, get okay. it. But I did feel like this heightened sense of femininity. I even move a little different. And I remember as I was walking down the street in, in Brooklyn in best the kind of attention I was getting from men and women. And um, with the mask, it was like... You felt like it was different? It was, a, it was a different kind of um, respectful attention. It was like... It was like I was exotic looking um, to people at the mask and the, the long, and it was just like, it was an interesting kind of attention that I, I dug it. I dug the attention. And, and um, you know, walking down the street like this, I get favorable, respectful attention as well. Um, but do you feel like you have, you feel like it's on certain days or? No, no, no. I, I mean, I, it's, and, and this is not some braggadocious, like just on just any time. Like I look good every day. Okay, like girl, what? No, but honestly though, men are very respectful. They usually, they say like, you look beautiful, sis. Like you look, not many women can wear that, sis. You got the right hair for it, sis. You you really look. So I, I, I get those type of compliments. But when I had on that wig, it was a... <laughs> it was just a different kind of like a almost kind of like, attention. it was a different like an awe it was interesting how do you feel when you wear what kind of attention like when you wear when you wear your natural hair when you wear a shorter wig and or when you wear a long wig what type of, is it is it attention different or is it the same um, sometimes the attention is different when I wear because I do wear wigs that actually just look like my own hair Right. And I just didn't take the time to, you know, like I have this, I have a couple of Afro style wigs that I wear that generally when people, when I wear those people think, oh, they think it's my real hair because it looks very similar to my real hair. Mm -hmm. um, and I do get a different type of attention from a different type of man based off of if it's a natural looking style yeah. versus if it's like a straight looking style. But also the clothing and the makeup, it all comes all together. You know, like, I think I saw Tyra Banks on a show. She said one day, she was like, you can either, she's like, you can show up with no makeup on and your hair done, or you can show up with, you know, with a, with no haircut, but you, if your hair ain't cutting or styled or whatever, but you got your face better be beat. Don't ever do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can, I can feel that energy. Like there have been times where, you know, my hair was freshly braided or, or, you know, freshly combed or styled, or I had a fresh or fresh little wig on or something. And I didn't have any makeup on and just clean, fresh, running to the post office real quick. You know what I mean? Little sweatpants on, you know, I'm just on my wings. She's curvaceous. You know what I mean? Don't let her feel you. She's curvaceous. <laughs> you know, so you on your way to the post office. You're like, hey, hey, hey. And you get a little attention, right? But then on a whole nother day, face beat right 
dressed like a like almost wearing hijab darn near no hair just like totally covered because i i really enjoy modesty very much as much as i enjoy showing curvaceousness a little cleavage i follow like modesty hashtags and modest fashion hashtags because i swear some of the um the 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 women the the islamic women super rich Islam islamic women have wear the finest clothes honey they have on the finest slacks and they got the best handbags and the jewelry and their nails are killing it and so on days where i'm i might have full makeup on but i'm not necessarily showing anything body i still will get attention you know what i mean and i think there are men who you know there's always going to be face men and then there's always going to be butt men you know what i mean there's always going to be arm men and leg men, chest men and hair men. You know, there are going to be some men who just cannot do it. They can't do natural or they can't do super short. Then you always going to have men who cannot do weaves. They don't right. know nothing about no weave, nothing. You know what I mean? I would say one of the hardest things I would say is being an actress and dating and being, say you're doing some character for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a particular haircut or style or something. Say they tell you, oh, we're going to, um, you got to, you can't get a haircut for the next two months and we're going to um, make your Afro platinum blonde. And say in that moment, at that time, you see, you might like it, right? But say you're dating a guy who's like, I don't want no blonde Afro. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But that's the style you got to wear because your body, your face, your hair is used for, you know, as an actress in your entertainment career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, dealing with that, it, I would say it always seems as though, um, and I, and I keep, I'm, I'm trying to be aware that it may just be the people that I'm around, but people can't, they cannot last even just the, the six weeks of, oh, your hair got to look like that for six weeks. Ooh, you know what I mean? Like, the impatience of it all, you know, a, a nice, un I feel that a nice understanding man will see your beauty and will enjoy and appreciate your femininity. And even if you have to wear your hair a certain style for a role, that he can rock and roll with it until it's time for it to be over, you know? Yep. And let me add, let me just go to, so I forgot to, I, I did a, I did a YouTube video whereby I asked, I surveyed people. I'm always surveying people. I text people. They're like, what does Shining want this time? But I said, you know, what is, what is a, I asked a survey. I asked, the, I asked the, the men in my network, in my circle, what does a genuine smile from a woman, what does that do to you? How does that impact you? And got, and, and, and um, I, from their responses, I created a YouTube video and it was wonderful responses. It was all Oh, I saw that video that you did. I love that video. I love that video. Yes, I love doing it. And thank God for the men in my circle because they they know when they they like, here come China. He, what what's, what she want to know now? Well, but they're always yeah. they're, but they're always like willing to share their point of view, and um, that was a wonderful experience. I just it came to me, and I just text these men, and they responded. Um, but I'm a type said that they love smiles, right? Or they love smile. They love. It's like it makes them feel good. It makes them feel. Um, inspired um they just a woman's smile is everything to, a genuine woman's smile is everything to men it's everything mm. oh my god they love it they just it makes their day like we don't realize and again that's why i stress genuine like not on some fake ish but if you just you know if you think of something that makes you smile and a man catches that like you made his day Ladies, you made his day. But I'm going to um, segue to Miss Saquon. So Saquon and I met up at um, the river, down by the riverside in Harlem earlier this year. Oh. I was walking with Saquon and we both had our masks. Blah, blah, blah. I had my hair like this at that too. Right. And we had on our masks. And Saquon, some, some gentlemen walked past us. This was like, like June or May, whatever. And mm -hmm. the gentlemen, the two older gentlemen walked past us. And Saquon... They, our eyes caught, and Saint kind of removed her mask, y'all. She removed her mask and she smiled. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, then I put it right back on. She put it back. I'm like, I was like, I am, like, why did you? I, I was so fascinated. I thought she knew them, y'all. She didn't know them. She just, she tapped into her, that was an expression of femininity. Please explain why you did that. I love that you did it because I never thought to do that. So go ahead, please. 
That was hilarious. <laughs> First of all, let me laugh that you remembered that I did that. I do, I do do stuff like that quite a lot. Um, that was. I did this. Um, I actually did a video probably a year ago, and I and I called it. I think I said uh, I called it the mango method. I I decided that I am a mango. I'm I a walking I mango. I also looked at. Yeah, I say women are fruit. Fruit women are flowers. And I feel like we have a lot of power to bring a lot of joy with our beauty. And um, I'm, all seeking, I'm always seeking pleasantries, um, seeking great exchanges, lovely exchanges and whatnot. I remember I was walking around and um, I said, I saw these men, these African men, they were sitting on the bench and I think it might have been I don't know, but some, I don't know. I said to them, I said, um, I said, bonjour. I said, bonjour. And she was looking, she was like, why are you talking to those men? And I was like, why not? <laughs> I, and, and I think she was like, but they weren't even cute. And I'm like, what do you mean they weren't cute? Who cares? You know, I enjoy, yeah, I enjoy the exchange of, I just enjoy that interconnectivity. I think that in, if this were, years ago, maybe 150 years ago, before all these cell phones where we're just like on our phone, always drinking coffee, always, you know, in the day, yes, in the, we were, in the days of eye contact, in the days of having someone come over and sit in your salon, have a bit of tea, you know, in the days of, um, human true human connectivity it wouldn't even be a odd question to say why are you speaking to those men that you don't even know them because when i was she um she spoke french fluently and i do not and she was like, <laughs> and they were sitting on the bench they weren't paying no attention to us but i was like ça va they were like ça va and we just kept walking and i was like hee, hee, hee. i get i get a little pump up when i get when I've had a lovely exchange, whether it's a girl, or when I see a sister looking good, like if I saw you in that, pur that purple flower, whatever, fuchsia flowers with the earring, I'd be like, yes, with the earring. Like I'm just always having my <laughs> interactions with people. It pumps me up. I feel like it just, it gives me some type of joy. Like, and honey, we're quarantining out, out in these streets. Like I'm at the house by myself. I live alone. Um, like just it, having exchanges with people brings me joy, but I feel like, um, I just, I feel like it's like a little power. I just enjoy the power, that power of femininity, you know, the soft power of it all. I really, really enjoy it. So yeah, I do that all the, t randomly, I definitely smile. I smize, I smile, all of that. That was very, you know, that was very powerful for me to witness because I used to get men say, why are you looking so mean? Why are you looking so mean? Why are you so <laughs> mad? I'm like, I'm like, I'm not mad. That's my natural, that's my neutral expression. Uh, <laughs> they call it RBF, right? You know that word, you know RBF? No. They call it resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. That's a, <laughs> there's a lot of women, um, not just black women, a lot of women in general, we get blamed with like, you know, like say if somebody catch you and you're like, Right. And you're like, huh? And they're like, what's wrong with you? And you're like, I was just, it's literally just the face that you make when you're just studying or whatever, or you're yeah. studying, you're researching, you're thinking through something, you're trying to figure something out. It's just a natural face that you might make, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're mean, you know? I but actually, I'm sorry, go ahead. ahead. Oh, okay. Well, my, my, uh, on my, my, my mother's side, I'm the Wilmington's. I got that neutral me face from my mother's side. Now, all of them, they have beautiful smiles, handsome mm. smile. My granddad was the only person in the family who actually smiled willingly. And he had such a, rest in peace to him, he had such a handsome smile. They all mm -hmm. did when they finally decided to smile. But um, my uncle Tommy, rest in peace to him, he was 95 when he passed away. He said, China, China, he called me China, China. <laughs> I used to have to pen. practice to, I would practice, when he, he was literally like, like 80 something. 
He said, I would mm-hmm. practice in the mirror, smiling at myself because people, he got tired of people saying, why you look so mean? Why are you so mad? And he wasn't mad. So he started practicing and he has such a handsome smile. Um, so, it, I mean, for him to make a change in his life at 80 something, I think that's pretty damn impressive. To change your ha- habit like that. Shout out to, shout out to your granddad. Like for real. I, yeah. I think um, I really, I purposefully over the last year, I made a huge decision. I mean, a decision, like even down to these, me putting these nails on randomly. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, I made a huge decision. Um, I would say it started about June, late June, early July of 2019. I was doing um, the Secret Life of Bees play down at the, um, what is that playhouse? In, in Chelsea. I was in New York mm-hmm. and I made a decision um, that I wanted to enhance my personal femininity. I've made a purposeful decision to do that because I was really recognizing how much more you get with how many bees you get more bees with honey, you know, than, than with, than with, you know, lemon, you know, so I, so I was really trying to sweeten my existence and sweeten my interactions with people. So I made a decision to, so even though I've decided a very simple style of dress, um, and I mean, I have some more exotic, fun things or whatever, but for my day-to-day, I decided more simple dress, but I decided to put more effort into my day every single day. You know, I was just like, I'm not getting any younger. Life is going forward. Let me make the most of every single day. And that means really taking my time, enjoying my tea, enjoying doing my hair, doing my nails, enjoying, um, you know, down to the little things. I started putting like, I don't know if I, I'll show you some. This is so random. This is my mouse for my computer. Nice. I started putting, now I didn't do this. I didn't be dazzled. I bought this like this, but I started adding sparkles to everything. I started adding... <laughs> I literally started adding sparkles to everything. Like, and it, it might seem a little, cra- you know, it's like little arts and crafty or whatever, you know. I always watch Wendy Williams and she's always like, oh, I'm doing crafts in the back of my office. But it, like, just adding a little razzle dazzle to your life. I, I started to find my own joy in that, you know, and especially during the, even during the corona, when a lot of people, um, or during the quarantine life, where a lot of people, you know, was like, I don't need to get dressed every day. I don't need to, you know, I wasn't necessarily because I wasn't going to be doing all that laundry, but I did, you know, I found a pocket where I was like, Whoop, let me put a little eyebrow, let me put a little powder just because it would just give me a little pick me up. Honey, one time I wore some heels to the corner store to go downstairs and get an avocado in my building. It was a corner store. My building. Let me tell you, this man was like, he was like, oh, oh, you need help? He was asking me, do I need something? The butcher, I was not asking for no turkey. I was getting an avocado. The butcher over there, you want turkey sandwich? Like, they was trying to, I was like, look, let me, t- let me tell you. That walk from just down the stairs off my elevator, maybe 100 feet into the bodega, those heels made a little difference. It, it brought a little sparkle, you know what I mean? To, to the, the, the guys in the bodega, shout out to my bodega in the Bronx, it brought a little sparkle to their lives. So that's why I started taking that time and taking more time with my own hair, as much as I wear all the wigs and different things like that. Like today, I was telling you, it's wash day, I'm working on my, um, my interlocking, these, these twists, they're, they're not interlocked. I mean, they're not twists, they're interlocks. They're so tiny, mm-hmm. but the time that it takes doing the conditioner, like taking the time you know, and not just always rushing. You know, I think, I think I'm a witness and I've, I've researched it and I've seen it. A huge tenant in femininity is softness is slowing down, you know, like really taking your time. I, I remember a, a friend of mine was in town from Liberia and I took her to, uh, we went to Dumble House and when we walked in, um, she immediately went to the 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 um, the host and was like asking about where we're gonna sit, and I was like, wait, 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 we got to stand here and look at 
we got to stand and look across the room first. We got to see what's going on. I said, we stand, we look across the room. You see people you know, you might greet a few people. We're not rushing to our seat yet. This is how we meet people. This is how we, you know, people always ask me, because I don't do, they're like, how do you get dates? Because I have a little date here and there, you know what I mean? Or a little quarantine telephone call, right? How do you get dates? Because I'm not on any online dating or anything, but it's because I'm like, I'm smiling, I'm personable, and it's taking that time to do it and not just being stuck in my phone all the time. You know what I mean? Yes. You know what? Speaking of heels, one day I was just headed to the store. Mm -hmm. And I was finding some shoes to put on. I had on a dress on some GP because I didn't have to iron it. I'm just being 100. But then I was going to put on my flat shoes. Or I was like, and I spotted my red little heels. I was like, China, put on some heels. I know you're just going to the store, mama. But put okay. on these heels. And let me tell you something, all right? I went outside and I had on my, and it changed my walk. I was like, I'm digging this. Like, cats were like, earrings yes. oh, jangling. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and it, it, like, the hips were swaying. And br brothers were just. Heels do for you. They make the hips sway. They make, they, make, they make my hips sway, honey. And it was, again, the tension was respectful. Brothers was like, how you doing, sis? I, I, we see you. We see you. We see <laughs> It was so, it, and I felt so. Feminine, and I know that I'm naturally, I'm innately feminine, but it was a, a heightened level of femininity, and it felt really just nice. And and so I took my little time walking back home in those red little heels. Um, it, and it it did it bursted my it like it uplifted my mood. It honestly, it really did. And I did a little cute little video of it of me walking with my heels and stuff. Oh, is that on your YouTube? It's on Instagram. Oh, your Instagram. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's, I'm, I think so it's excited. I'm so excited to be in a new place because now I can catch up. I got to catch up on YouTube. I got to catch up on Instagram. You know, yeah. I've been in transition, moving yes. from state to state. Yes. And um, so I'm, I'm going to have to look specifically for that video. Or you have to make sure you, because I'm trying, you got to do more. I like you posting and posting and posting, but now you got to link, connect your Instagram. Oh, yeah. So put that Instagram video in the bottom of this video so we can all look and see you do your your sway that's where it's a video of you swaying and walking yes and you and all you see are, all you see are my are my red shoes and you see my calves my legs walking a little yeah, bit of my okay calves. so Just send it to me i'm gonna link it and when i because i'm gonna put this video on my channel too and i'm gonna link that video okay and i'll probably link i'll, I'll link something whatever else whatever we referenced i'm gonna link it all in the the, the info bar below and so i wanted to conclude this video with my testimony and then yours. So what I've discovered in my adulthood and my maturity is when I like a man mm. and I interact with this man, my voice is softer. Mm. You hear no bass in my voice. You hear softness. You're be like, what's up, man? It's no, it's, no, it's like, what else would you like? Would you like this? Sure, no problem. Oh, absolutely. Would you like something else? Oh, that's really nice. Wow. My tone is completely different when he is kind to me and I enjoy his, we enjoy each other's company. I really tap into my femininity. I talk because not only are we physically soft, but my tone, my vocal tone becomes soft. And mm -hmm. nice to see you. I miss you. What are your thoughts? That's all I have to say. I would say, um, first of all, I love that. I love that you acknowledge that part of you that softens. I think, honey, in these 2020s, <laughs> this, decade, this decade right now, can you believe it? It is 2000. Oh, we are in the 2020s. In this decade, I think that a lot of us are reclaiming femininity and we're seeing the strength in softness. And so you're not afraid to admit or, or to acknowledge the part of you that becomes softer in a man's presence. Um, I would say, 
I, qu I sort of question the thing in myself is that there's a little girl, there's a girl child, a girl woman in me or a woman child. I've heard people describe um, Marilyn Monroe in this way of being a, a woman child. And so I can often, I can do a softer voice. Sometimes I might even do a baby voice. I might talk like a kid from time to time, which some people love and some people hate, but I might be like, we gotta get something to eat. I'm so hungry. Oh my God. Oh, you got me some tea. Thank you so much. You know, like some of that, it could probably, it gets on people's nerves a little bit. I'm not even really doing it like I probably naturally would. Right, right. But I would say that's my thing. I probably, I, I drop into a little, definitely into a, a girly, a girly girl mode. And I think that's always going to be a part of me. Like, no matter how old I get, I think I'm always going to have that, that part of me that drops into that girly, girly vibe and i will say in closing i appreciate you bringing up this topic i appreciate you inviting me on i am going to be using some of those products of some type i'm going to be doing some scrubs some hand masks yeah some all of that whatever everything that we talked about i'm gonna to try to work on it for real i i got some um I got some new products from uh, uh, uh shea moisture so i was doing them on my face but i think i'm gonna do them on my hands yes. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Like, so I'll probably do some stuff like that, you know, just to include my hands and my, my femininity and softness, um, skincare and things. So I'm really glad we did this. I'm really glad you invited me. I have to cheers you again. Yes, just, just cheers. So, um, again, cheers to every expression of sincere femininity. Cheers. Um, so shout out to all the girls out there, the ladies, the broads, the deems. Um, yeah, the broads and the deems. The broads and the deems. Any other, any other colloquialism for ladies, sisters? I think that's it. I think I covered it. Chicas. Whatever, yeah. Chicas to the mamacitas. Yeah. <laughs> Those lovely ladies. To the, to the divine femininity. Without the divine femininity, none of us would be here. Let's keep it 100. Oh, yes. Shout out to our mothers. Yes, shout out to our mothers. And our grandmothers and aunts. Yes, grandmothers. All of our mothers and yes. the ancestors, all of the yes. 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 All right, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this show. I had so much fun discussing femininity, the various expressions of it with Lady Seikan, Simbla, Actress, Singer, Entrepreneur, all those things. Oh, Speaking of femininity, we're going to do our little plugs first. Let me yes. you do your plug and then I'll do my plug. And then we're going to really wrap this up. Well, I'll shout me out. Y'all, please um, make sure you, um, if you're watching this from my channel or um, China's channel, I'm Seikon. My YouTube channel is Seikon Talks. So please uh, follow me, uh, subscribe, and click the bell button so that you can get my updates because I go live. Um, and... I do, I do posts and everything. I'm an actress. Look out for me in the upcoming Respect movie. Um, and the more announcements to come. But we have Respect starring Jennifer Hudson that's coming out. So again, I'm Seikon Simblo. And make sure you follow me. Follow me and like me. Um, Seikon Simblo everywhere across the board. Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, everything. But Seikon Talks on YouTube. Cool. And for me, um, as always, check out my feature film, Dark Seed, on Amazon Prime. Or you can download uh, or rent my film, Sweet Thang, on my website, ChinaLColston.com. Um, you see that's the poster behind me. I'm also selling Sweet Thang film t-shirts, $25. I have extra large and black for men. And I have black, I mean, I have small and medium um, for women in black and white. So thank you for um, enjoying, hopefully you enjoyed this topic and please share your expressions of femininity and what you think it is and what it ain't and whatever. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Okay.